Welcome back. As I mentioned in my digest at the top of the show, Insulate Britain were back causing chaos on the roads again this morning. Our London reporter, Alice Porter, was in Thurrock in Essex, where they struck first. Take a look at some of the chaotic scenes. Commuters reported waiting nearly an hour for a single police officer to arrive and their frustration was clear to see. Which, which I'm already an hour late that potentially I've lost because of this. There's a shortage of lorry drivers, there's one more shortage now because I can't get to my interview. You know, I've, I've got uh, two young children in the house to keep, I'm going for an interview which is about two miles up the road. I can't get through because these won't let me get through. So if I've lost my, I lost my job because of these, what am I going to do? Go and claim money like these lot? Well, where's the police when you need them? They're around the other side, they're not here. How can they be allowed to do this and get away with it? They've had their lives. They've probably retired, don't work, live off the state, whatever. They've got their money. We can still go and earn our money. You know, so come on. It's, it's not, they're affecting the wrong people. Go and sit outside the government. Not outside of people trying to earn a bit of money. With nothing seeming to deter them, not even court orders banning them from our roads, it begs the question, do we need to get even tougher on Insulate Britain? Well, I'm joined tonight by a spokeswoman for the group, Gabby Ditton, who will be defending their campaign of terror. I'll also be bringing in retired police detective Mike Neville and Chris Phillips, former head of the National Counterterrorism Security Office. But Gabby... Uh, I, w I want to come to you first. Why are you doing this? Um, I'm doing this because I'm absolutely terrified oh. of what's coming down the road. And I did the democratic process and nothing happened. And now I feel totally desperate. That's why I'm terrified, effectively. That's why. So you don't believe in democracy? Oh, I do believe in democracy, but I, I tried all of the stuff I'm supposed to do. My MP doesn't actually get back to me ever anymore. Um, so I'm just doing whatever I felt I had the power Why to do. Why not set up a political party? Uh, do you really think that that would work if I set up a political party and tried to get into power? I, well, that's we're in, that's we're in... how democracies work. Yeah, I understand that. And then you can change the laws. Yeah. You're asking me why I didn't set up a political party. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm we're just in an trying to... You started the segment of the show saying so-called climate emergency. Correct. Uh, the fact that you think it's acceptable to say so-called emergency is deeply concerning to me and a lot of people. Like, I'm 27 years old and I have to live this future that we're going towards and I just feel like not enough is being done. So there's a lot of people you that are non-violently You need to be a lot less terrified. I'm actually an environmentalist. I grew up in New Zealand. Yeah. And as a young boy... I was told constantly and consistently yeah. by hysterical folk that my country was going to be wiped out mm. because of the ozone hole. The brilliant humanity uh, and, and development that we are as human beings changed all of that because yeah. we changed our behaviours, we changed science. And the same thing's going to happen here. But constantly saying that we're not doing enough in this country is wrong. We are leading the developed world. Yeah. We have a plan to get to net zero. But you must understand, you can't bankrupt the country doing it. We're not trying to bankrupt the country. This is the thing I, I, I'm trying to explain. It's like, we can't afford not to do this. If we don't do this, we know what the future looks like. Did you see the Chatham House report that came out mm -hmm. on the 14th of September? It said we have a 95% chance of going over two degrees of warming. And two degrees of warming is one billion people will be displaced. Like, it's literally like Mad Max is what's going to happen. How does blocking the M25 do It gets you on thing? GB News and I can speak to people and I can speak to you and I can raise the alarm. And I am so terrified right now to be here. This is a really unnatural environment. I just want to get on and live my life. But I have to do things I'm scared of and we all have to do things we're scared of if we're going to make the change we need to make. And I know you're going to ask me about terrorism and the people that you see on the roads I know that your viewers in their hearts know that they're not terrorists. They're just desperate people that have got nothing to lose. I'm sorry, I'm, well, <laughs> I'm shaking. Well, if you, look, if you look at the definition of the Terrorism Act, yeah. the 2000 Terrorism Act, what you are doing represents every single aspect of that act. I'm just not sure how it helps anyone to paint us as terrorists, apart from maybe 
um, the government to not give us what we want, which is insulation, which is such a no-brainer thing. It's but you are, you are threatening violence and We're criminal behaviour. It's all non-violent. Well, it's not non-violent. You've caused strokes. You've potentially caused a near-fatal car accident. It's not non-violent. Yeah, I, I can feel I can feel the outrage. I really do. And you're right. It's it's dangerous, but that's just a fraction of what is coming down the road. That's what I I can't communicate to people is that it's bad. It's really bad. But what is coming further down the line is that all of the time. And do you think that these terrorist actions are getting the British public on your side? I think it's less about getting people on our side. I think, I would hope that most people agree with the demand, which is to start reducing carbon emissions no, no, no. immediately. You have a much more specific demand than that. Yeah. You are demanding that the government pay to insulate all social housing by 2025. And according to a Mail on Sunday undercover investigation into Insulate Britain over the weekend, you will quote unquote unleash yeah. hell, unleash hell on the British public yeah. if Boris Johnson doesn't give in to yeah. your demand. Do you not understand? That's the action of a terrorist group. If you were Muslim extremists, you would all be locked up if you were behaving that way. I mean, we're not Muslim extremists, but we are doing this over and over again. And they are quite welcome to lock us up. We are far less afraid of anything that they can do to us than what is coming down the road. And I know I keep saying it, but that's because it's true. And yeah, I think they, they should lock us up, they should charge us, and they should throw everything that they can. And that's what people are saying that they want, so they should, they should go ahead and Have do that. Have you thought about the consequences of the action that you're causing to Brits? As in the daily disruption? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awful. It's terrible. Do you agree with your leader, you know, or one of your found founders, Roger Hallam, who says that he would not move... Do he I would agree not with him? move even if there was an ambulance waiting to get through the roadblock with a dying person inside. I haven't heard the full interview, um, but okay, well, we've got Britain... it. So let's have a look okay. at it and I'll get you to react off the back. I'd stay there. You would, yeah. And if it were an ambulance and there was someone that could potentially die in there, would you stay there? Yeah. Gabby Disson, would you stay there? No, Insulate Britain has a clear blue lights policy, so and that's his personal opinion. But if he was on an Insulate Britain action, he would move because I hope he would. Um, so yeah, you we, would move uh, we always for an move ambulance? For, yeah, absolutely, I would, yeah. Why did you not move for the woman who was trying to get to her mother in hospital? Because that's not an ambulance. Why did you not move for the woman who had had a stroke and was desperately You're trying to get point, to hospital. You're missing the point, Dan. We're getting into, like, no, no, stuff I, I, that's I, I, not... I'm not missing the point. I'm not missing the point. If that was you one of your relatives... If that was here. one of your relatives who nearly died as a result of the Insulate Britain movement because you didn't move to allow that car to and get through, do you not think that that would be a big issue? If... if some, oh, sorry, I just... I'm frustrated because, yes, it's bad. I understand that people are disrupted and, and people have been held up in this way. But, again, it's, it's just not a about fraction people being of held up. Coming. You're making it out as if it's about someone being late to work. And you know it's that awful. that's not what it's about, it's Gabby. Awful. It's about people it. missing it. potentially life-threatening surgery. I hate it. I do. I, I don't you have anything else move. to say. I, I would absolutely move for an ambulance, yeah. No, 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 but I'm not just talking about an ambulance because the, the woman who was in the car who had suffered the stroke was in her son's car. If you're this upset car, she about this one ambulance. person that's trying to get to the hospital, why are you not upset about the 95 people that are going to die every day this winter because of fuel poverty? Like, if you're going to be outraged about that, which is fair, please apply your outrage to other situations. Like... I'm eight outraged eight about a, a lot. I'm outraged about a lot. But why and I talk about, about it on the show every single so much night. On but I'm focusing thing? on your organization because I have you in front of me. And if this was one of my and relatives, if this it, was one of my friends yeah. who 
had and been I said caused it's with life threat. Well, it's more than rubbish, isn't it? It's heartbreaking. It's it more is than heartbreaking. Rubbish. Well, oh, yeah. it's, it, it's actually criminal. It's criminal. And I think what you're doing is What's so criminal? selfish. What's criminal is the government pushing us above two degrees. That is actually criminal and breaking their own laws. Yet why are we not talking about that? The government should be in court for betraying this whole country. And I'm not going to swear, but I was going to swear because I'm that angry. They've betrayed every single one of the British people by putting global warming below two degrees. But it's we, a death sentence. So, so you're not happy... And we're still you're focusing not happy on people in traffic the plan jams on the get, M25. You're not happy with the plan to get to net zero by 2050. You say it's not soon enough. We have to go as soon as possible. What we do... Sir David King, Chief Scientific Advisor to Blair and Brown, said what we do in the next two, three to four years will determine the future of humanity. We have to go as quickly as possible. We need a wartime effort. And I believe, the reason I do this is because I believe we have it in us, in this country, to come together and sort this issue out. I passionately believe that. And I think it would do the world of good. It would just be incredible. And I believe we can do it. But That's I've asked you specifically about <laughs> the Sorry. issue. I've asked you specifically about what you want to talk about, which is the government's plan to get to net zero. And I'm asking you if you believe that we can get there before 2050 without bankrupting the country. I can be... I believe we can do amazing things if there is political will and we work together, is what I believe. Can I ask about your property? Um, I live with my partner. I don't have my own property. OK, well, we're... But, again, why are we talking about my we're, property? We're, like... We've looked into where you live, according to the documents that have been filed, and you only have an energy rating of D. I don't even know what address you've got. I've moved house quite a lot. It doesn't even... Again, well, it's, why it's, are we talking about... Well, you, you were arrested and it was the dress that... Code was a, Red was, for Humanity, the, the, IPCC report, and we're talking about the place that I... One of the places I've lived. Like, Have do you not properly insulated your own home? My, the place I'm living at the moment, mm -hmm. I, I believe it's properly insulated, but I'm not sure. Like... Do you not do you Code not understand for humanity? Do you, sorry, um, do you not understand Code how ridiculous that humanity. sounds, Gabby? Gabby, there's no point just repeating the same catchphrase okay, over and no. over again. Do you not understand how ridiculous it sounds that you are literally stopping people getting to hospital appointments and potentially causing deaths because you want the government to insulate everyone's home? but you haven't properly insulated your own home. I, I, for what it's worth, I do believe the place that I am living at the moment has proper insulation. I don't know what address you have down for me. I would rather you don't read it out on the news. No, and I'm not going to do that, but it has an yeah. energy rating of D. OK, but I don't know what address you've got. I lived in many houses. I've well, I presume, moved a lot. Well, I presume <laughs> when you were arrested, you gave the correct address to the authorities, which is how we have procured your address. OK, that is not my address at the moment. Okay. I have moved very recently, but again, okay. Like, so, so in the pre, so in the previous billions place, billions of people are going to die, and you're talking about a place that I live in. What the insulation is like? Do you like, not believe in any form of personal responsibility? Absolutely, I believe in personal. Then responsibility. surely, if you're shutting down roads and you're propagating that the government should spend billions and billions of pounds to insulate all social housing in the UK, at the very least, your personal responsibility, given you work and you have a job is to properly insulate your own property. That, to me, sounds like absolute common sense. So you, you wouldn't listen to anybody that has not done that as an essential first step? Well, I think you're a group of hypocrites because I've had Liam Norton on this show as well who hasn't properly insulated his house. He has an energy rating of E. And I just think you're going to lose all credibility with the British public if you're asking the government to do something that you are not prepared to do yourself. It's do as I say, not as I do. And I think that's something that's so bad with extreme environmentalists you or eco-terrorists. You can't you, expect you, you us don't practice to all what you live preach. off-grid You travel in around the world. And, you like, you can't expect us to, like, live off-grid in a mud hut, never use electricity, never do this, never do that. That's, that's unfair. Like... I'm but a normal person. Your group is called Insulate Britain. Yes. And you don't live in a properly insulated property. I, again, I'm, I'm pretty sure I do now, but that does, again, it's like, why are you focusing on that? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. It feels disingenuous. Like, I'm, I'm struggling to, to understand why, why, why we can't get past this. Like. 
because I believe in personal responsibility. And I believe, I believe that if you genuinely think this is the way to stop the destruction of the world, which is what you've literally just told I me... I don't think it's the way. You, then, I think it's Then an you would have the personal step. responsibility to pay your own money to insulate your own home properly. There's, there's That's the sort of society people. that I believe in. Seven I wouldn't ask all of Brits poverty. to do something that I wasn't prepared to do myself. And I certainly wouldn't go and sit in the middle of the road, stop ambulances going through, cause car accidents, and if I, cause and if misery for the British people without home, following it would through be myself. Something Something else. It would be the plastic on my shoes, the polyester in my dress. It would be something else. No, because to, you're to no, make no. me different. You're to other specifically people. campaigning to insulate the houses of Britain. Yes. Okay. But again, even if so, and you don't even know if the property that you're living in is insulated. I, I'm pretty sure it is. But you don't know. I don't know. No, I don't know. Okay. No. Well, look, I want to bring in. Uh, a couple of other guests now. The retired police detective Mike Neville is here, and so too is Chris Phillips, the former head of the National Counterterrorism Security Office. Uh, you've both been listening to Gabby too. Uh, what, what's, what's your reaction, Chris? Uh, well, I mean, it is hypocrisy, and, and pretty much all these, uh, these single-issue groups uh, uh, suffer with that. Uh, of course, we've got hundreds of single issue groups across the country and we have had for many years uh, and each one has its own issues. Now, to be quite fair to these people, they've successfully got their message out. You know, we're talking about this on this TV. It's been across the news. Um, uh, but I think um, the, the police are really struggling to deal with it simply because they, they've been dealt a hand that they're not uh, able to, uh, to manage. And, and I, what I mean by that is that the way to stop this happening is to actually uh, send people to prison if they if they mm. continue to break laws, uh, but also potentially take homes off them and, and houses off them and assets off them if, if they continue to break the law. But of course, our courts aren't doing that. Uh, and that's what's making and allowing these people to carry on uh, committing these crimes. Gabby, how would you respond to that? Um, I think the protesters and myself, we're quite prepared to go to prison. Um, like I said, I, I'm much less frightened of anything that the criminal justice system can do to us than I am starving to death. <laughs> My well, that, that's good news, because the best place uh, to stop you from sitting in front of cars is probably a prison cell, and that that would solve the issue, wouldn't it? Yeah. And uh, we would. I all, would. Uh, I would not like worry about you it. to be in prison at the moment, uh, Gabby. I think you're. I agree. A, you're a very nice person, but <laughs> I, I don't think you should be allowed to cause this chaos ahead of the COP26. But also, Dan, coming. it's the assets. I mean, people's assets. You yeah. know, these people have obviously got assets. Uh, they're breaking the law, and maybe their houses should be uh, taken off them, or um, you know. Whatever, you know, whether it's their own vehicles or whatever. Okay. They, they, Mike, there should be a means of dealing with, uh, with, with people like this. Mike Neville, your view. Well, I just I feel sorry for Gabby. She she keeps coming out with all these stock phrases like uh, "cold red" and "emergency." She obviously lives in total fear uh, of something that may or may not happen. And uh, I agree with Chris. The police have got to be more proactive. As we heard in Thurrock, it took them an hour to turn up, and that's an hour when ambulances are blocked, children are stopped from going to school when they've missed eighteen months to COVID. And I think in the wider term as well, when we keep talking about fuel poverty, it will be the poor who suffer. If we don't have carbon fuel, it will be poor people who can't afford it. And what Gabby is trying to achieve, she'll make even more people die of, of, uh, po uh, of uh, fuel poverty uh, with, a, with an extreme view of what we keep being warned of uh, Armageddon all the time. And uh, I think the people's reaction to that will put, put their head in their hands uh, because they keep hearing all these extreme views. We know the climate changes. It, it's changed every uh, for every year the, the earth has been in existence but it's it's constantly being told that the buckingham palace will be flooded or some other nonsense and uh, people are sick to death of it and i think uh, if she wants to go to a prison cell then all those silly old fools we start sitting in the road then they can go as well and I okay think well i want to give to... gabby a chance to respond uh, to that gabby <clears throat> i just think Spreading climate denialism is just so dangerous and I kind of don't have anything to say to that. He, he just said the climate was changing. He said the climate is always that. changing, which is something that people say to 
say it's this not is a real, property. effectively. It's become like a religion. <clears throat> the conversation has moved on from, is it is it happening? Is it serious? Isn't it serious? We know it is, and now we're talking about how to deal with it. So catch up. Mm. But I actually sign up to that, Gabby. Absolutely, I do. I just don't sign up to the more extreme measures that are going to put uh, the wealth and the health of Brits at risk. And I also think your group really should be targeting China, actually. I think it would be much more wise if you had the bravery to go to China, to really focus on that country, which is uh, the root of all uh, issues when it comes to carbon now. It's not China's responsibility to insulate British homes and stop was it like eight and a half thousand people that are going to die this winter? It's got nothing to do with China. It's, yeah, it's... it's no, but over 27% argument. of the carbon emissions across the globe come from China. They're all of the top carbon emitting cities and it's growing. Uh, but look, Gabby, I mean, I think you're a great person. I'm glad that you've come here. Thank you. I personally think it would be so much more wise to take these sorts of platforms have the discussion, put your point of view forward, rather than taking this extremist terrorist action, which I promise you, Gabby, is turning off the British public. And we live in a democracy. It's the British public that you need. If, if, the, if, if, if the British public supported what you wanted to do, then Boris Johnson would probably have to consider it as a policy at the next election. But what you're doing is losing the British public right now. Final word to you. Uh, just thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, it's been a fascinating conversation. That was Gabby Ditton from Insulate Britain and the retired police detective Mike Neville and Chris Phillips, the former head of the National Counterterrorism Security Office. Thank you all. Coming up, he shook up Washington and now the mooch himself, Anthony Scaramucci, is making a splash here on Tonight Live, answering your questions on all things Trump.